It happened at three o'clock in the afternoon on Wednesday, the 26th of October, 1881. In a small lot on Fremont Street that the Earps and Doc Holliday were involved in a violent altercation with some cowboys. Here you can see before you the Earp brothers, or three of the Earp brothers, and uh, the uh, temporary policeman, Doc Holliday, <laughs> from Knuckle Duster Miniatures. Um, I've finished painting the Old West project. Um, well, this part of it. Okay, so let's have a look. Yeah, nice, nice and close. They're sitting on um, one of the the Time Life um, series of books um, on the Old West. This this volume is uh, the one that has quite a lot about these guys in it, actually. It's called uh, The Gunfighters. Um, it's not... Um, it's a good series, and it was my dad's, and um, I have it on my shelves now, and um, it's not the most up-to-date scholarship or anything like that but it does give a decent outline of certainly what happened um so here we have this is um virgil erp who actually at the time was a paid law enforcement officer and he went to there'd been a huge build-up to this altercation and by law you at that time in tombstone um you weren't allowed to carry firearms in, in the streets or in the town mind you <laughs> these guys were carrying them but i suppose you could say that they were doing some law enforcement work and um the cowboys had been some long-term tensions building up particularly with ike clanton um they were told that uh, the cowboys were in this area of Fremont Street, quite possibly getting ready to leave town. But I, I had been mouthing off all morning and for ages about how he and he was on a drunken bender um, about how he was going to kill the herbs. So tensions had risen a lot. Um, ostensibly, the the herbs Virgil, his intention. Uh, did seem that he wanted to disarm, according to the town regulations, to disarm the cowboys. He didn't want um, what happened to happen, um, for, as far as we can tell. Although, you know, ver uh, there's various opinions that sometimes paint the cowboys as the good guys and sometimes paint the herps as the good guys and vice versa, bad guys, whatever. Um, so these guys, these are depicting the, um, as they were in the movie Tombstone from the early nineties with Sam Elliott. Isn't Sam Elliott such a cool character? <laughs> Wasn't he brilliant also in Gettysburg? Oh my goodness. It's just something really cool about that guy. Um, he played Virgil, even though in real life, the photos I've seen of Virgil, he's a bit sort of. It looked a bit heavier around the face, but might, that might, might have been him as a bit older. I don't know when the photos were taken. Um, this is Wyatt. And Wyatt was the only one actually from the, the altercation, the gun f fight, not at the OK Corral, but at Fremont Street um, in, in the back lot where actually they were all in extremely close quarters and 30 shots were fired in 30 seconds. And it's a wonder... All of them didn't get killed. Um, in the end, the, the three of the cowboys were killed and two or three others escaped, including um, Ike Clanton. Um, Doc Holliday suffered a minor wound um, and the other two brothers, Morgan, this is Morgan Earp here, he was wounded and so was Virgil. White didn't suffer a scratch. <laughs> Now, 
Um, you can see Doc Holliday here. I painted him. He's much paler and pastier, a bit like Val Kilmer was in the movies because of the tuberculosis. Um, I think one of the reasons that he headed for the West and for drier climate was because of the tuberculosis. Um, so I've made him pale and pasty, and he's got that sort of sweat on his undershirt there. You can see the darker staining around his chest area. His ivory-handled pistols. But they uh, they gave him a shotgun. Um, in some ways, that I think the movie kind of gives you the impression they gave him the shotgun because he could hide it under his coat. But it does seem, um, according to some more recent histories, that it's quite possible, although Doc Holliday was some, known as a, a gun, a slinger, and that he would produce his gun and shoot at people and things, he wasn't actually a very good shot. And <laughs> that the Earps felt they had more chance of him hitting something if they gave him the shotgun. Um, who fired first? We still don't know. We probably never will know. Um, there's stories about there were two clicks. And some people have surmised it was um, Doc Holliday clicking back on the shotgun. Um, other people think um, it was two of the other guys, Morgan and perhaps one of the cowboys or, or one of the other herbs just cocking their pistol, both of them about the same time. And, and all it took, things were already very highly charged. And all it took was someone to hear that noise and it all hell break loose. And as I said, 30 bullets in 30 seconds. And um, it is possible as well, people have surmised that perhaps uh, some of the wounding, because they were all so close to each other in this little street area, this boxed in area and it spilled out onto the Fremont Street, I think slightly around the corner into 3rd Street, that um, and it didn't go into the OK Corral at all. Uh, which was much sort of further up the back. Um, yeah, that it may have been that, that one of the Earps um, winged one of the other Earps because there were just bullets going everywhere. Um, and at one stage, Ike Clanton tried to sort of throw up his hands and throw himself at Wyatt, and I think Wyatt's Earp, Earps gun went off in, in that and sort of Earp pushed him away. And, Anyway, Ike Clanton ran away and a couple of the other guys. But, um, yeah, three guys were killed. There's a very famous picture, actually, it's in this book, of the um, the uh, guys who were killed in, in their coffins, um, in their Sunday best, with the glass-fronted coffins that they were leaned up against the street and the photograph taken, people could see them, the young fellas there. Um, opinion was very much divided in Tombstone about the whole thing. It was a, It was a political thing as well as a you know a law thing it was it was a very divided community in that it was sort of um there were some people there one newspaper that was sort of backed the cowboys and the other newspaper backed the sort of more uh the the side of the of, of the, the herps and and that sort of stuff and there was even division in the, in the in the uh, law enforcement side of thing with sheriff johnny Bean um seemingly Anyway, he ended up sending men after the Earps later on. Um, so, yeah, and this incident set off the whole Vendetta ride and, well, led to the Vendetta ride eventually with um, further killings resulting and later on attempted assassinations. After that, these these guys were, the young fellows were killed in this altercation um, and there was actually a, a month-long trial that the... Earps and Doc Holliday had to attend because it was pretty touch and go as to whether the whole case wouldn't be sent up to the higher courts in Tucson. And it could have, could have been that, that the Earps might have got actually done for homicide. And um, But, um, yeah, it's a long story, but they they it got dismissed and not taken any further. But, um, yeah, so this is them. Now, what I've done with these, you probably can't appreciate it from this camera angle, but they're painted usual using acrylics, and then the basing is kept nice and simple. We didn't want to, the customers said, you know, because obviously they could be, this could be in the town. 
Um, just wanted that sort of dusty gravelly street thing. They've, they've had um, the addition of um, uh, pigments or a pigment powder, a MIG, MO MIG pigment powder um, around on their boots and um, around their lower legs, some more than others, um, particularly some of the cowboys because they probably spend a lot more time in the saddle. Um, so there's a bit of dusting there with that around the lower part of them. And then with um, so the uh, alcohol that you use for setting the um, pigment, I just delicately dropped some in between their feet because the pigment had formed up there, but I wanted there to have this illusion of that between their feet, there would be some shadow um, as if, even though it's 3 p.m. and not high noon, but um, yeah, some shadow between their feet um, still um, so that you still get that darker effect there. But yeah, there's, so there's there's some um, pigment on there as well. Yeah, I'll just turn them around. So it's always interesting challenges painting blacks. You know, it's never quite straightforward. There we are. It looks like they've given Wyatt that extra long barreled gun that some people think he had, but actually he, he most likely did not. Um because it was highly impractical. He had a and he's Coat. He apparently had a specially designed pocket which he could put a pistol in. But if you're about to go into a gunfight and you've got to draw as long as quickly as possible, you do not want something with an extra long barrel that's going to take you longer to draw it out of the holster or the concealed pocket than the bloke who's facing you down. Um, so there they are. Now let's bring on the guys who they face down in that little pokey space of Fremont Street. So I'll take these guys off. And I'll start to bring on the, some of the guys they faced off against. Now, I can't remember exactly all their names. I think this was the youngest guy. I think that was, was that young Billy? Or was it Tom? I can't remember. Anyway, um, but this is Ike Clanton here. Um, he was quite sort of the leader of uh, the, the cowboy group. Um, but he took off <laughs> when the shooting started. Um and, you know, he'd been sort of the mouthiest one of all, really. <laughs> Mouthing off for ages and, not, you know, drunk and disorderly and making trouble, saying how he was going to do all these things, but, yeah, he ran off. So these guys are quite dusty around the, the lower part of the, the chaps on their, their leggings. And... I believe this guy here, he was the youngest of them. And then you've got the others. So these were the guys they faced down against the Earps. And I'm guessing it's these three that ended up dead. Fairly sure. Um, yeah, interesting. I, I was looking, um, I saw a picture of the real Ike Clanton and he looks remarkably like, this. the actor they chose for that looks remarkably like the photograph. So, yeah, some pretty good, interesting you know, casting choices there. Yeah, so here they are. Of course, there's been lots of movie versions of the whole tombstone incident and the corral, some of which are just, just so far off the mark to be ridiculous. 
that have the gunfight running off through buildings and getting behind barrels and all sorts. <laughs> That's just crazy. Nothing like what it was. Okay. Now, also, from the uh, Tombstone movie, we've got a couple of other characters who appear in the movie. Now, if I can remember correctly, I think this is Turkey Creek Johnson. And he's one of the uh, allies of the Earps. And this guy is Texas Jack Vermillion. Again, these are all knuckle duster miniatures, metal miniatures. Beautiful, clean sculpts. Look so much like the, the characters in the movies. Lots of detail to paint. You know, they've got the pigments on their boots and stuff and around the base. Texas Jack. He's a flamboyant looking character. So many of them were. I like to dress up. <laughs> an image to uphold <laughs> yeah so yeah they they helped uh, the Earps on the vendetta ride and that and here we have a couple of the leaders of the cowboys i use cowboys in, in, in inverted commas because it actually at the time it meant more than just the typical use of cowboy which was you know someone obviously who worked on Work with cattle and herded cattle and all that sort of stuff. Um, it had come to mean in that part of Arizona, it had come to mean particularly, um, well, organised crime group, basically, who uh, were rustling cattle from across the border of Mexico and nearly caused a, caused a conflict with Mexico as they're just stealing so many cattle from Mexicans and raising a lot of trouble. And there was some, quite some significant tensions on the border. Now this is, um, this here is uh, Curly Bill Brocious. You might remember him from the movie Tombstone. His red shirt, again, somewhat flamboyant looking. One of the leaders in the cowboy faction. Real troublemaker. Bit of, you might say a bit of a sociopath. <laughs> again, so they've got the pigments, the dusty around their feet. Um, it's in the movie. Uh, I'm fairly sure in the movie it shows that Wyatt um, took down uh, Curly Bill in a gunfight down in the scrub in the bush, um, and somehow managed to survive himself. Now, um, this guy, this is Johnny Ringo has some wonderful encounters with Doc Holliday in the movie. Um, not sure how accurate those are, but he did apparently have some run-ins with Doc Holliday, but I think he had run-ins with a lot of people. Again, you know, probably something of a sociopath, undoubtedly brave but and well-known in the region, Johnny Ringo, um, involved with rustling and gunfighting and stuff, but... Um, He's had the, the, in the movie Tombstone, they uh, they insist on giving the gang, cowboy gang, these red sashes to, around their waist to uh, identify them. But that, that's no, I don't think there's any evidence that that was the case. I think it was just um, something that the uh, filmmakers did so you knew who was who. <laughs> um, but yeah, pretty cool character. Pretty cool costume. Looks a lot like the actor, you know, both these do. And you may remember, remember the scene from the end of the movie where the uh, Doc Holliday and Wyatt come turn up later back to hunt down Johnny Ringo and there's that face off, there's, uh, you know, with the, the lines about uh, Doc Holliday saying, why Johnny? 
You look like someone walked over your grave. All that is complete fiction. <laughs> so, and of course, Doc didn't have the shotgun at that stage. Now, it is the case that Johnny Ringo was found dead in the Turkey Creek area with a bullet hole in the head. Um, the coroner sort of, they just put it down as um, suicide, but it wasn't properly investigated, really. And the fact was that he didn't have any hole in it. He think he still even had his hat on his head and his pistol hadn't even been discharged. It was still loaded and the, the bullet angle, the tra trajectory they thought would have come out of his hat if he'd done it himself, but that wasn't the case. Now, um, there have been some outlandish suggestions. The, mo the most outlandish suggestion is that Doc Holliday did it, which is not just even in the realms of possibility in that he was in another state at the time and was in trouble with the law. Uh, <laughs> and there was, uh, yeah, some legal wranglings and things going on at the time. I can't remember all the details, but it just, he, he couldn't have done it. Um, now, Wyatt Earp supposedly had said that he'd done it, but Wyatt Earp, towards the end of his life, I mean, was all part of the business of being an Old West legend that, Certain things got built up and said that maybe weren't the case or told to people that weren't the case because, you know, it helped make some money. And, um, I mean, toward the end of his life, he was used as a wired up as an old man was in in the 1920s was coming on and being a consultant to silent movie makers uh, who were making some of the early Western movies. So, you know, he had a reputation and he said some things that, and he even tried to draw a little map and that it's all, but he, he was in Colorado at the time and the whole journey that was suggested that he could have made his way cross country by various means, got there, shot Johnny Ringo in the bush at Turkey Creek and, <laughs> and then made his way back. It's highly unlikely, highly unlikely. What seems a stronger possibility, although, you know, it may be that Johnny Ringo shot himself, but that's doubtful and they're not likely after a, over 100 years to reopen the investigation, um, was that at the time a guy called Frank Leslie, uh, a local bartender in Tombstone, had been uh, threatening to kill Johnny Ringo for some time and um, was actually seen immediately before the discovery of Johnny Ringo's body in the area by someone. Now, uh, there's... Um, Local ranchers report having seen uh, Frank Leslie and one of the Claiborne's with him. Um, but the Claiborne later said that it was Leslie who, who had shot uh, Johnny Ringo. So we'll never know for sure. But that seems quite a possibility. Okay, so that's them. Now. Next up. We have a couple of completely fictional characters. Here we go. But recognisable. Let's bring it up here. Let's see if we can get this. Here we go. Clint Eastwood as the Pale Rider. The Pale Rider. There he is in his dusty old coat. Looking mean, nasty. And here he is from his Fistful of Dollars movies. Another dollar more, a Fistful of Dollars. And I don't know. He made a few of them, didn't he? These spaghetti western things. Looking dusty and dirty and rough. Got his poncho on. Done an approximation of the colour and the pattern. It seems to vary a bit depending which movie stills you look at. But something like that. They're very cool miniatures. They're very well done by Knuckle Duster. So these are Clint Eastwood lookalikes. Now, these next guys. You might recognise these if you've seen a fan of old westerns. You might even better. Hum the tune to the movie. We have here, sorry, I'm just getting them out one at a time. 
See if you can recognize the actors. I can't remember them all. But the guys from The Magnificent Seven. One more. There we go. There they are. Now, the ones I can immediately remember are Neil Brenner. I think, was his character called? My customer did write a list of who was who. Um, Chris Adams or something in the movie? No, I can't remember. But that's your Brenner. All in black with the bald head under that hat there. Okay, now we've got a bit of dust around their boots. This is the Steve McQueen character here. Another character played by Steve McQueen. Remember his name. Um, this is the young guy. I don't know the actor's name. I'm not sure what else he was in. But he seemed very youthful in the pictures I saw. Now, is this the guy all in denim? I think that's, is that Bronson? Charles Bronson, is it? I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. And that, when you look close up, it's a bit hard to see from here, but when you look close up at his face, he's got that, that Bronson look. It's a younger Bronson look. Yeah. The light is probably not ideal, but it really does look like him. And what's this? Is it Robert Vaughan? And it just looks like Robert Vaughan. This guy is a really good miniature. I managed to put some very fine pinstripes on his waistcoat, which he seems to have in some of the movie stills. He looks a bit slick. He's got his gloves on, his black gloves. Very neat and tidy. Just a little bit dusty around the boots, but yeah, I think it's Robert Vaughan. Uh, I can't remember the actor who played this guy. There you go. And is this, uh, is this Coburn? Oh, I can't remember the actor's name. But he's got, um, he's got, I think there's a scene in the movie where the other, his opponent's expecting him to draw a pistol, but he's actually got a dagger in his hand he's getting ready to throw. So there they are. The Magnificent Seven. Now, apparently, my customer has also, and I think it's the same with the uh, the other figures, has also purchased mounted versions. Oh, my goodness. So, <laughs> I may be revisiting these, perhaps, possibly, at some stage. <laughs> Let's hope I can get them similar looking. <laughs> it's not always, not always uh, possible. But uh, you can get close, but <laughs> you might not use exactly the same paints you used before. But as long as they look about right, that's uh... so. There you go. There's the magnificent seven. So I hope you've enjoyed the uh, the video and the little bit of um, snippets of potted history. Um, there's some great books out there on the old west. Um, some are more um, myth than history, uh, legend rather than factually based but um you know um, a lot of famous characters in the old west um but uh, yeah it's certainly a fascinating um period to get into uh, as i said again all these figures are from knuckle duster miniatures they are all metal i believe the sculpting may be um a 3d uh, digital sculpting but um, the figures themselves are metal very little clean up 
um, lovely to paint, lots of detail, and a great representations of the characters from the movies. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. I'm not sure what my next project's going to be. Um, I might go... I think I, ha I have got a couple of different projects here. Um, some that have been here longer than others, so I'll probably switch back to one of the earlier ones. I think I've got some ancients that need uh, that might, I may do next. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, thanks for new subscribers. And um, anyone who's given a thumbs up and a comment, if you've got any comments or questions, just leave them down below. I do try and answer or, or, or reply or, or like or all those sorts of things, um, your comments. Um, and I really appreciate them. All right, guys, all the best, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.